listeners and friends of the festival, welcome to Offscreen with OFA. Another day, another episode. This week I'm joined by the director and cast of the feature film Between Waves, Virginia Abramovich, Fiona Graham, and Luke Robinson, winner of the Oakville Festival of Film and Arts Award for Best Canadian Director, Virginia was also a writer on this film, along with her writing partner, Catherine Andrews. Between Waves follows Jamie, played by Fiona Graham, who attempts to join her missing lover, played by Luke Robinson, by crossing into a parallel dimension. Virginia's unique style as a director, the film's beautifully woven story, as well as Fiona and Luke's incredible chemistry make for a film which is both profound and utterly gripping. I had a great conversation with all three of these creatives, and I can't wait for you to see their film. Take a listen. Well, welcome Virginia and Luke to Offscreen with OFA. It is such a pleasure to have you guys on the podcast today. I so enjoyed this film. It was not just one of my favorite films from the festival, but truly one of my favorite films, like in general. Like it's it's definitely been added to my list of of must watch um, because I, I, I so love every aspect of it. Um, so I'm so excited to have you guys on the podcast today. Um, first, though, I do want to say a huge congratulations to Virginia for your big win with us at the Film Festival um, for Best Canadian Director. That was um, such an incredible accomplishment, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, Virginia, I would like to start with you just kind of diving in right away to the development of the film a little bit and how that writing process began, because this film um, is really so... Um, nuanced in its story. I think that was one of the things that really drew me to it. Um, and all of its characters so well thought through um, and such an incredible location with the, <laughs> the Azores, it was so lovely. So um, maybe chat about that a little bit, how this how this very unique story came to be. Yeah, so I, I, it was a long time coming and I um, first starting with my love affair with the island of with of San, San Miguel and the Azores. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, I'm very fortunate because my husband's father's side of the family is from the island. So I went there a few times and I was just like, I have to tell a story here. I, it was just, it's so beautiful. So that was uh, this idea that was in my head for a long time, at, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, you're like, this is gonna make it really awesome story one day and also I felt like the island was very healing um was very kind of had that it had a mood and an attitude and um so so th the idea was there for a long time and uh, to tell a story there and um then one one year I, I decided I'm just gonna like uh stay behind it was an opportunity for me to stay behind like Went with the family but i stayed behind and i just worked on um on a writing proposal for the canada arts council and i got a writing grant and that's really like so the story was i was working on it like i kind of it, it's very hard to find the space and time to write um and so receiving the writing grant all of a sudden like what a huge um help that was to just affirm and you know confirm that this is like this is going to be and at the time it wasn't a sci-fi story uh, the story in my head it was about a you know a, a, a person that was grieving and a woman that was grieving and then um getting uh like coming to a place of acceptance and sort of healing through the island and that was that was basically the idea um that was in a nutshell what i was trying to the story i was trying to tell but it's really when um so Catherine Andrews, who was my co-writer on this, when she came on board, like when we started to work on it together was really when the story just became so much more because uh, it was a collaborative process. And the other, my huge collaborator was Fiona. So um, she's not here, but before really- Oh, the... she is here. She's just joined us. Oh my God, she must have <laughs> felt, she was, she slipped in there while you were giving your answers. Oh. Yes, to the audience who is watching and the audience at home listening as well, Fiona has now joined us on the podcast. Um, Fiona being one of the star actresses of this film. So, so lovely to have you on the podcast, Fiona. Thank you for joining us. Um, I would like to follow up a little bit on what you were saying, Virginia. 
I was actually going to kind of ask whether the, the Azores was, was a location that was familiar to you. What was it like filming in that location and how did you sort of orient that with, with crew and with cast and, and sort of making that happen? Um, yeah, kind of from a, from a the logistical a, sense a logistical of it. Yeah. Standpoint. So um, it was a location that was familiar to me as a visitor. Um, and then it, and I had some family there, so that was awesome. Um, and, uh, but really, uh, it, it's very different when you film in a place than a place that you come to, to go on the beach. <laughs> so, um, so we did, we had a, we had a, a really awesome person there, Philippe, uh, Taveras. Uh, I'm gonna, please don't kill me if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, but Philippe was awesome. He's, he's a local, so he has like a, a little, he has a company there, but that also does events and music events. He does music festivals. And so when I connected with him, I was like, this is gonna happen because he uh, helped us like organize it, coordinate it. Um, it was a huge, so there was a huge part huge effort on his part, helping us with locations. We went there, so we went, we did a, a scout down there. So I went there with my assistant director, my director of photography, where we planned out all the shots and everything. So that was a separate trip before the crew came. Um, and then also uh, my, my producer, Alex Jordan, who coordinated, we had to bring everything there. We had to bring um, even Apple boxes from Toronto. So- wow. Um, because they, it, all the equipment had to come. So it was literally a, a, like, you know, those big skids where you put like, you know, like, so it was a whole, all the equipment that we were, had to be doubled because we were shooting in Toronto and we got on a plane over the weekend and wound up in the Azores. Wow. So we just rolled over like we, we did um, 11 days in Toronto and nine and a half days in the Azores and we just kept on going. Um, so he had, so basically he had to send and figure out all of that for all the equipment to get there before we did. He went there ahead of time uh, to retrieve the equipment and to, uh, you know, set up everything we had to. Um, so it was, a, so that, I mean, so that was like a huge project in the sense that it's never, it, they did, you know, it wasn't, but everybody there was so accommodating and so welcoming and so awesome. And like, just, uh, which made it, you know, and Luke was there and he can vote for that. Like how, how it was, it was such a pleasure to film on the island. Um, so once we got there and, and uh, it was a small crew. So it wasn't, we didn't bring a huge crew. It was a small crew. It was small cast. They came with us there and we used local people for uh, background performers and we rotated our crew. <laughs> uh, so if you look carefully, you'll see people repeated, but hopefully you won't see it too. You won't notice it too much, <laughs> but. Um, no, it's most definitely like a logistical thing to be able to shoot in some of those more remote locations as well um, and do that within the context of an independent film, I think that's that's phenomenal. And it's certainly, you know, visually paid off so, so beautifully. So um, I think that's it's a pretty incredible feat. Um, Fiona has rejoined us <laughs> online. So yes, we were speaking a little bit about your involvement in the writing process. So if you don't mind carrying on a little bit where we left off there. Yeah, sure. So once Virginia had approached me with the idea for the story, um, we arranged a time to meet up in New York uh, with the writer Katie Andrews, Virginia and myself. And um, we, we, we locked ourselves in a drama studio, an acting studio in a room and uh, suggestions of wardrobe and props and ideas of how Jamie lives and the space that she would live in and the, sp the space that she would inhabit and how she moves and breathes and eats and sleeps and in that space and um, we sort of just really explored who she was from the inside out in all of her private moments and then how she puts herself together 
to go into the public and what her persona is. Um, so, and I, and I think that really then added to Virginia and Katie in the writing of uh, of how Katie of how, of how Jamie breathes. Yeah, no, I could most definitely see that there was a lot of of deep work that was happening there um, because she is such a well character. Um, I don't know, Virginia, if you wanted to speak to that. Yeah, I just wanted to add that Fiona, you totally forgot that before we even really started to write the story, I went up there for three, three or four days. Fiona and I worked every single day and built the character. Do you remember that? I do. I was very, very pregnant yes. with my first child. And we just, we, we barely slept or ate. We just talked and talked and talked and sort of riffed, didn't we, over yeah. character. And I, I came back and I had, I had like transcribed like a whole bloody, I don't know, it was like pages and pages and pages and pages of Jamie. And yeah. so, uh, and I remember coming back with Katie and I had recorded all this stuff too. And so, so really, and that was always the plan, like to build this character and build a story around her. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. so, and the second time was when we went to New York and workshopped, but that's already when we had a script and we had a lot of the story written. But yeah. Before we really started to break down the story. Um, that was, that's how we started. And I, and I, I've never done that with a script before. And it was such a rewarding experience to work and as we wrote we would send Fiona drafts not every draft but once in a while we'd be like okay we did some really good work now we pushed the story forward take a look and then you'd always have comments I loved it <laughs> oh fantastic no this isn't work no I don't think Jamie would do this I don't think <laughs> would do that no and and not in a precious way about not in a precious way, just sort of, I wanted her to be, a, what I, want the, I want to watch characters that we completely relate to. And so therefore I wanted Jamie to be a very relatable human. We're watching a real human being on the screen, having a real human experience. That's what I wanted. I think you hit on something really great, Fiona, which is that it's something human and relatable. And I think the specificity of the character completely added to that. I mean, I think from my viewing experience, seeing, you know, the 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 levels in terms of the the trauma that this woman is dealing with, the, the present issue that this woman is dealing with, multiple present issues like loss and grief, which is such an intense emotion and feeling that so many people in this world experience and, you know, is like and really get a sense for for who she is. Um, with what, whether it be costuming, whether it be mannerisms, it, it really all comes together and it's a, it's a beautiful performance. Um, yeah. So I, I, that, that was something that absolutely came across to me. Um, yeah, thank you. yeah, of course. And, and speaking to Luke as well, I'm curious, Virginia, if you can speak to the casting process for bringing Luke on board, because it sounds like Fiona, you came on very early on, which is so great. Um, yeah. and, and seeing that transformation of your character, I'm curious how it worked with with bringing Luke into into the fold, uh, Luke came in in a more a way more traditional way. <laughs> he he, uh, I didn't know him going in. Uh, he auditioned and it and he he won the role fair and square. <laughs> um, he and he uh, I he grew into the role. I he transformed into the role, which uh, was lovely to see. Um, he 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 took it on full blast. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think you both did an excellent job, and I'm wondering too if you can speak to how you sort of developed that that chemistry between the two of you because that relationship is such a precious thing in the film and um, such a gorgeous thing, but also you know fraught with the uh, the turmoil that sometimes happens in in relationships. So I'm curious how you guys built that dynamic. Well, Fiona, would you would you like to answer? I I know I've answered this question a couple of times, and for me, it's the exact same story. Because um, well, I'll tell that story. But Fiona, would you would you like to talk about how you believe we developed the chemistry? I want to hear your story, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> so, well, if, if anybody is listening, then you can hear the wonderful accent that Fiona speaks with. I used to speak with a very similar accent. I was born in England, right? So we kind of connected over that kind of familiarity and we would crack jokes and do accents and this, that, and the other. So for me, that was just something like from, from back home, you know, it's almost like, you know, the way it is with me and my cousins when I go home and that kind of thing. So there was a real familiarity with me and Fiona on that level. And I always say that if you can, if you can crack jokes with somebody and it comes naturally and you can have a good time, Fiona and I, we had a great time on set. We were, it was always a good time. Um, a lot of hard work, got the work done, but it was always a good time. So I always say, if you can have, if you can have fun with somebody, if you can crack jokes and, and you know, there's a chemistry there in real life, then it's so easy to translate to film and to translate onto screen and that kind of thing. So for me, it was just, the connection for me, it was just having a familiarity and getting that comfort real, real soon and, and quick and, and being able to relate and that, on that kind of just that familiarity, you know, something familiar. I love that. And just building off of that, that yeah. small level of connection. That's fantastic. Fiona, what about you from your perspective? What are your thoughts on that? I think, I think, uh, I think you said it, Luke, we, we really had a lot of fun from sure. the get go from stepping into rehearsals, just, you know, we just had a, you're funny, you're a funny, funny man. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I, yeah, we just had a lot of fun, and we did a, we we did some sort of like dancing, didn't we? To to get our bodies physically used to each other's bodies, we we, we sort of like did a few of things like exercises like that just to get us our bodies really comfortable with each other. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, we yeah we connected on humor for sure, and yeah. and home. And we were both far away, and yeah, it was really good. You you came to set every day just with so much light, so much um, effervescence and energy and so generous with your energy to everybody. You know, you're utterly charming. It's hard not to want to work with you, to be honest. <laughs> if anybody is listening, to all those who are listening, <laughs> the charm that Fiona brings to the table every day. So, you know, she's flattering me with compliments, but if you're working with somebody who is like this and so generous, then it's it's so easy to appreciate them. And I appreciate you, Fiona. And I appreciate oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Luke. <laughs> it's so lovely to see uh, all the positivity that you guys have been able to bring to this process. And it's also amazing to see too, because this is very much a genre of film and that it's a sci-fi, but at the same time, it's so amazing to see all of the the work and um, prep that went into to building these characters and making them fully fleshed out um, and paying attention, you know, to, to not just developing a story, but a story at that. So um, kudos to all of you for doing that. Um, I will move on a little bit to some of the subject matter of the film. What I found really interesting, both visually and thematically, is the incorporation of um, this duality and sometimes reflection and showing doubles. Um, and I know that obviously we're dealing with a sci-fi film that deals with um, different planes of reality, but I'm curious, Virginia, if you can sort of speak to the decision behind that, um, incorporating that both on screen visually for people to see um, as, a, as a visual device, but also um, as one within the story, and, and if that has any greater implications, um, either allegorically or, yeah, speak to that maybe. Um, sure, it kind of, you know, it goes back at looking at, um, you know, one of the things I was sort of looking in this film is, is mental illness, um, and there's a duality to that, like, um, because I had somebody close to in my life who um, had a breakdown and then couldn't tell the difference between reality and what was not real or what we think is real. Because 
at some points I wasn't even sure. I was like, well, is this person actually getting a glimpse into something we can't see? Which was, uh, it's very interesting. I know Timothy Finley uh, just, you know, he and he had a mom who was crazy <laughs> and I had a dad that went crazy. So, um, and he explores that a lot in, in some of his stories just uh, about the enlightenment of the of people who seem to have lost sense of reality. Um, so there's a true duality to that, um, you know, in this idea of multiple universes um, and the whole journey. Um, this this I didn't want the audience to, to know or or to constantly question what was real and what wasn't. And it was part of the journey that they were taking with Jamie. Um, and I think up until the end, you don't know. And I don't know if it, it, people have come out of it going, they've made very strong decisions and I don't want to tell them. And I think you could watch the film, um, you know, and be like, you know what? She's traveling to different planes and she's seeing different realities. This is really happening or this is in her head. And I'm not sure it matters which one. Uh, so the duality, this duality of splitting and making decisions and the idea that when you, the idea of the multiverse theory, which uh, uh, you know is is basically with every pertinent decision we make, we create a different timeline. So these timelines are going at the same time in a parallel to each other. Um, and so, what would happen if if they converge? And and Jamie is at a part in her life where she's making a huge decision. So it was a lot of things. It, it is a lot about duality, and I and I congratulations. I've noted it was, we there was things that were intentionally filmed, uh, like we filmed the bathroom scene through a prism. I noticed that, and and that yeah. was one of the first things that caught my eye, and I was like, wow, that's such a fantastic, such a fantastic idea, like to uh, to really reinforce that. It it totally clicked with me. So. so that was that was like in camera. And then there's some duality, some of those duality shots that are that were done in post, where uh, where she's in the shower and you see a reflection. And so we as we started to uh, like some things, some things were planned and some things were discovered and some things we found as we were filming. But um, it's kind of like when you when you tell a story. It's what I, I find with filmmaking if you're open. Uh, things sometimes, you know, you, you open yourself up and you go, okay, this is a story I'm going to tell. And then you start to see things and you start to see other elements come in. So some of it, I, I think if the question was partially, if some of it was planned and some of it was planned from the inception of the film and some, you know, and some of it uh, came in as we were filming, like uh, that shot where, where Mark walks in and you see the like it's it you see the staircase you follow him up and it's like a double split i mean that that was just you know that was that happened on the day like the, it's where the camera wound up and it just became this beautiful shot and and you know and some of it was like yes uh the concepts were we thought about it and this is how like making that decision to do that in the bathtub was was a plan from the very beginning and the first time that we're seeing sort of Jamie and introducing her to her world. So hopefully that answers that. No, it absolutely does. Um, so wonderful to, to hear that some of those really fantastic ideas just kind of came out of the creative process. It's always exciting when those those uh, those decisions get made. So that's, that's really awesome to hear. I do wanna hone in a little bit on what you were saying, um, just with regards to whether you're not really sure whether this is something that she's experiencing mentally or whether it is, you know, genuinely there's this, this crazy sci-fi, you know, adventure going on. Um, I, I found what really kept me absolutely like just found the entire film so gripping was the fact that you were constantly faced with this doubt um, and it created a lot of suspense and a lot of questions for the audience to kind of try to figure out an answer. Um, and I'm curious how you approached that, whether that, how deliberate that was in the writing process. And then also um, if Fiona and Luke, you can speak to that in terms of how that influenced your performance. 
um, in, in the writing process, it was very deliberate. Mm -hmm. I, I, ne I never wanted, I never wanted there to be a finite. Um, I always wanted it to feel like you could take one road or the other. So I was creating two, two parallel <laughs> streams of, of reality, I guess, at the same time. Um, but I'm curious, I'm actually curious uh, about you guys and what you thought of, of that. Of, yeah, anyways, I'll, I'll let you guys answer that. Fiona, do you want to go first this time? <laughs> sure, thanks, Luke. Um, I, every, every day, every, every day I approached it as this is real to Jamie, completely real. This is her reality. Every scene that we shot was that this is her absolute reality. And that's the only way I could do it. Otherwise, I was confused. <laughs> because obviously we didn't shoot it in chronological order and so uh yeah all i could do was just shoot every scene as if it was i could just that that's what i am jamie is absolutely experiencing i don't know how else to answer it than that very interesting i think that honestly does come through and that it 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 holds the audience in and gives her the credibility in that your performance kind of taps into that and, and just sort of committing to that reality, um, which I think just kind of enhances that connection to her character. But Luke, what about you? Well, yeah, so, ah, uh, right. Isaac, yes, Isaac the Enigma, I suppose. Um, so check it. I had the same, the exact same way Fiona said that that had to be Jamie's reality. Isaac, for me, Isaac was real in every scene, in every sense of the word, he was real, he was really there. So whatever Jamie was experiencing, she was experiencing it for real. Um, and in terms of who she was speaking to, and I always, um, I always tread carefully when I speak about this because I don't want to give anything away for anybody who hasn't seen. Um, <laughs> but there's, hmm, there are many different sides to Isaac. And so there had to be, there's different sides to Isaac. So it was really important that I had an anchor for each side to Isaac that would allow me to, for lack of better terms, be honest and, and stay true to what is important about that side of Isaac. Because mm -hmm. it would have been really easy for them to all have kind of, kind of converge onto one, one theme and not be able to be differentiated between. And I think that would have muddied the water so much. It wouldn't have been the same story if you didn't have all those very specific sides to Isaac that you get to see. And sometimes he's, sometimes you're interacting with a side of Isaac and sometimes it's just observed, right? But there's so, yeah, there's so much, it's so deep. Um, so I had to, I had to find an anchor and figure out what was important about this specific part of Isaac that I'm trying to bring to life. That's such a, a smart way of approaching it. And I think that really comes across on screen because each, each side of, uh, of Isaac is, is quite individualized and, uh, and that really comes across in, in terms of the, the, um, the range of your performance. It's, oh, it's thank you so much, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, you're welcome. Um, yes, no, um, the story is, is really incredible. And I think one of the aspects of the story that really stood out to me as well is, is obviously this through line of water. I mean, it's in the title, but it's, it's so consistent throughout. And I was also curious, Virginia, as to how and when that sort of came into the process and um, why it was that you decided to sort of anchor the film. Wow, that, that really worked out, honestly, is a little bit of a pun, but anchor the film. <laughs> In water. <laughs> okay, so water. Um, I uh, I 
maybe it's because I'm a Pisces. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, the island is surrounded by water. Uh, water, like, you know, the more uh, the more we wrote, it just became more uh, apparent. And then uh, we went when we went to scout on the island and I was sleeping when you're on the island, you actually hear the waves all night. It's pretty awesome because they because you go to sleep hearing the waves and and it's and so like you're when you're on that island, that's all you're constantly water is everywhere. Um, and, you know, it was the conduit for the travel. It was, um, and then, uh, and then Jamie being afraid of water is because, uh, symbolically, like, I don't know if this came through or not, but even in our color scheme and everything, Jamie was water and she was all the blues and Isaac was fire and he was all the reds. Um, and Sorry, are you putting up something? Yeah, Fiona just held up a sign. Her baby's crying, so she's gonna oh. back. <laughs> bring the baby here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so uh, sorry. So water, uh, Jimmy was water. What Fiona never told me, and when she comes back, uh, was she's actually afraid of water. Oh wow! Is, and she had like this fear of deep water, and we filmed in out in 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 actual like out in the ocean. Go as far as it looks because, uh, but we were in open water. Uh, we filmed underwater. Uh, she went into a, a waterfall, um, and only later did I learn that she was actually afraid of water. <laughs> Uh, and I haven't talked to her about it yet because it's something that she like mentioned in this interview and I was like oh my god she's the bravest soul I know she's awesome yeah truly I mean there's that one shot where she's she's out literally on these rocks and the waves are just absolutely crashing and I'm not afraid of water and I would have been scared <laughs> so she's truly like pretty incredibly brave for doing that I think it's just such an, a very smart and uh also just visually stunning um, aspect of the film. But yeah, no, when, when Fiona comes back, we'll definitely chat to her a bit about that. Um, but in the meantime, I would also just like to ask about the underwater sequences. I don't know, Luke, if you can sort of speak to that. What was that experience like? Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun to shoot. So. I was, <laughs> I was very fortunate in the way that I didn't have to film in the ocean. Um, I don't have a fear of water or anything like that. If I had been asked, I would have done it. It would have been cool. Everything would have been good. But um, where I did film in water, um, it was, it was really, really a cool, cool experience. It was a really cool experience for me um, as an actor, but also like learning the way that we were going to capture these these shots and the scenes um some of the techniques were really really cool really really innovative and i never would have you know thought of them not to say that i'm a director or anything like that but i would never have thought to use the things that were used to get the visuals that that uh transfer so well on screen um but my experience was really really cool i had to use weights i'm not that buoyant i don't float above the water i kind of hovered just low enough to not be safe so i had to use weights to to weigh myself down to the bottom of this pool that we were filming in. And um, so I had some, I think around my feet and a little belt and all that kind of stuff. So we would take, you know, take a deep breath, hold the weights, go down for as long as possible. Um, I, was doing a, I was doing a scene where I had to, Isaac was cutting a rope off of Jamie's ankle. And so that was filmed underwater where I had weights around my uh, waist um, and then there's a scene where Jamie and Isaac just kind of have a moment underwater. And um, yeah, so getting that, we take a deep breath, go down, hold it as long as possible. We jump off the bottom. I'd push Fiona up before me and then I would jump up. We come up for air and then we do it all over again. 
So wow. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I had a lot of fun. I didn't know that Fiona was, was afraid of it. <laughs> working underwater I can only imagine the extra thought that you have to put into what you're doing but it again came across so seamless so congratulations on that um yeah of course I, I genuinely loved this film so much and I'm wondering if uh Virginia you can speak to as well um you know we've discussed the casting process and that sort of thing but how is it that you approach working with your actors and and you know creating that collaborative environment um, to sort of manifest this very human story? Um, I see myself as the protector of, of their environment. I have to create a safe space for people to be able to, you know, lay their guts out on the table because literally that's what they do. These guys put their hearts out on the table and I have to my, I see my job as a director it, and, and, and I, you know, it, is I protect that space for them and um, whatever it takes. So from the very beginning, I want to um, make sure that my actors are, feel safe, feel comfortable, whatever it is that, and I say that to them, like right from the start, I'm here to protect this space for you to act in. And I don't care what's happening. I don't care if the world's coming down, there's shit going all around. I don't want my actress to know any of that. You know, we're gonna be closed down in two minutes and the sun's gonna, the sun's gonna explode. I don't, they don't, I want their, I, tr I try so hard to protect their world. Uh, and these guys are troopers. Like, like Luke was with us every single day. He didn't have to be, he could have been exploring the island riding horses and going surfing i don't know seeing the whales every day he'd get up with the crew he he because he wasn't in all this all the scenes but he was there with us for a lot of the shoot thank you for being like the other thing is is both these guys made it so easy thank you um you're welcome you're so welcome there, there's somebody to look out for this guy you will see him go it's Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. And I would also, I'll ask as well when, when Fiona gets back, but what upcoming projects can we expect from the both of you? Uh, Luke, you want to start? Sure. Um, upcoming project for myself. I, ooh, I just, just on Friday, I just finished filming a short film. Um, so that is called out of order. I'm really, really excited to, to see that finished. Um, so you can look for that. I believe that that should be able to be seen in some festivals, hopefully in and around September. Um, I've actually put on my producer's cap and I've been asked to help produce the feature film of a short film that I filmed years ago called Dangerous Rumors. So I'm going to be doing some producing on that, doing some um, fight choreography because that's one of my passions. Fantastic. And what about you, Virginia? Can we expect any upcoming projects from you? So um, I have been directing romantic comedies and that's to make money. Um, so I'm gonna have another one coming up in August. Um, so, but they're, they're, they're fun projects. Uh, so my own project is um, I'm developing a TV series with Katie. So this is my co-writer that wrote Between Waves. Um, it would be fun. I would love it if anybody wants to pick up Between Waves and make that into a series. That I think would be very cool. So that's like, we'll see, whatever. But I have another, like a, something that's not related at all, uh, a different project um, about the uh, pharmaceutical industry. That's um, like a, a dark comedy that we're working on. And, uh, and another sci-fi script um, that's more apocalyptic and um, and, and also but more claustrophobic kind of story called Lil. So that's um, Katie and I are we're actually I've got this week off and I've been trying to write. The hardest thing about filmmaking is writing. I just want to say I hats off to writers. But if you don't have a good script, you have nothing. So uh, all of our efforts is, are just wasted if we don't have a good script. So those are my sort of projects that I'm 
that I'm working around. Uh, but I want to talk with Fiona about water. <laughs> Because yeah. she ran away as soon as she heard we were talking about water. Yes, Fiona, now that you've returned, tell us a little bit about your fear of water that I guess was a secret throughout filming. Oh my goodness. I'm not a good swimmer. I don't like being out of my depth. I don't like being in water that I can't see the bottom. I don't like being in the ocean two miles off land. It does. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to go into a waterfall. I don't want to know where that water is hitting the waterfall, how deep the pit is. Am I going to drown? How Will anyone test it before I go in? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not. And uh, the film really pushed my limits on my of sort of, Obviously, my fear of water, my fear of drowning. Uh, don't really like to go underwater in the bath. I mean, but can you open your eyes because the camera's there? Oh, it, it, it really, really, really challenged me. And that's what I love about being an actor is that you get the opportunity to be challenged in that way and to expand. And I really surprised myself at what I achieved and what I accomplished in regards to my fear and water with Between Waves. <laughs> so congratulations, Fiona, for mastering your fear of water. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very kind. I don't know if I mastered it. I still don't want to do any of those things ever again. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's also, fair. Fiona, if, if I don't know if you have any projects that you want to give a shout out to that are coming up for you. Um, well, uh, I have a film coming out with, uh, so, so after I shot Two Mates, I then shot a film um, called A Mouth Full of Air. And uh, that's with um, Amanda Seafried and Paul Giamatti. And I, I believe that will be uh, released next year in theatres. So that's, that's the next thing that I'm excited to see where that goes. Amazing. Well, I'm so excited to be seeing all of your upcoming projects hitting the screen. Yeah, Virginia, go for it. Um, I just want to say, actually, we should really give a plug for this film, too. Um, so Between Waves will be coming out on September 21st. And uh, in Canada, it'll be out on um, Apple TV and hopefully having a theatrical release as well. That depends on what's happening. Theaters are opening up in Vancouver and Toronto and also available on the Cineplex um, app. In the US, it's gonna have a theatrical release in um, New York and LA on September 21st and uh, available in the US and the UK on iTunes. So um, please, please, please go watch it. Enjoy it. Yes, anyone listening, please go see this film. Um, such a great watch, highly recommend if you wanna see something suspenseful, beautiful, um, something that's really going to pull on your heartstrings and please go watch this film. Thank you so much to all three of you for chatting with me today. It was so wonderful to hear all of your insights about not just the process, um, but also, you know, all of the talent that really went into this film as well. Um, so thank you so much for your time uh, and have a great day, guys. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. This podcast is executive produced by Maddie Kaiser and Wendy Donnan. The music is by Chris Shin. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and tune in next time.